are three basic elements that make up the volume of almost everything and the ability to create 3D of these three figures sphere, cylinder and cube will help you in the future to build the volume on more complex shapes and to paint any flower convincingly and professionally. I will start with a cylinder and it can be a stem or a trunk but it's important that it's round in a cross section. And here are two areas, the illuminated area and the shadow. I'm going to darken it right away. And now let's take apart the lighted part. The lightest spot is the highlight. Then you have the half tone. It's a little bit darker than the highlight. And then there is the tone. And it's darker than the half tone. It's obvious. This division is very conventional. And there are many gradations within each segment. And that was the lead part. Now the shadowy part. Now we have here the edge of the shadow. And that's the darkest part. And here we have a reflection. It's a little lighter than the shadow. Let me make the whole shadow darker for clarity and emphasize the edge of the shadow. We will need the knowledge of these volumes in long buds, for example, or in uh, cylindrical flowers like the tulip. And that was theory. And now practice. I have already drawn my future shapes with the vanishing marker and now I outline them with the resist. I try to bring the line to the edge of the silk so that the paint doesn't over overflow. My resist is purple and I have a metal tip on the resist tube as always which gives a neater line. And when the resist is properly dry, I can start painting. The silk is already wet, so I dry it with a paper towel to keep it from getting too wet. The acrylic textile paint is black and it's quite thick. The brush is synthetic round and the bristle flat one. I start with the shadow part and I will gradually increase the volume. I really like to use colored silk. The color immediately creates a mood. In this video the color is not so important. But I wanted to work on this blue today. This is the whole shadow. No gradations yet. But I soften the edge a little and I rub it. Then I move on the illuminated part to the half tone and to the second side and I soften the edge as well. Now I intensify the edge of the shadow and I make it even darker and in general the volume is all divisible and clear. I always work on a raw silk. For hand silk this method of stretching wouldn't work because small holes would be left on the silk. But this allows me to stretch the silk pretty tight. And look again, highlight, half tone and tone. And this is all the shadow. And I will once again make the edge of the shadow darker. So the reflection would be more clear. And voila, the cylinder is ready. Now the cube. I probably should have started with it, because it's considered the simplest figure. Nevertheless, let's say the light is coming from the left. And this edge is in the shadow. The top side is the very tone. And to make the front light surface seem even lighter, I intensify the shadow on the border with it. 
This corner is the lightest. And I slightly darken the opposite corner. And I also darken the far corner a little bit in order to get it more distant. It turns out that each side of the cube has small gradations. And what practical value can this have for us? Let's pretend that we see a butterfly with its wings half folded. And her right wing is in the shade, and it's even darker closer to the lighter wing. And the lighter wing is the lighter, the closer it's to the shaded wing. And so I darkened the edge of the wings a little bit. So now I put resist around the cube and wait for it to dry. I moistened silk with water and I slightly dried. That way the moisture is evenly distributed and it's not too wet. This is the same black paint. And this is my light edge, but I darken it slightly from the far edge. And I rub it with a dry brush, bristle one. Let's pretend that the light falls like this, and so the right side of the cube would be half toned. But closer to the light edge, it would be darker. The third side is in the shadow and will have gradations and closer to light edge the shadow will be darker. And the third important element is the sphere. It has the same principle of creating volume. So we have the lighted part and then the shadowed part. And right away I will make it even darker. The lightest part is the highlight, of course. And then comes the half tone. and then the tone and in the shadowy part the edge of the shadow is always darker and this is a reflection and we can use this when we are painting round fruits or round buds some flowers have a spherical shape to draw a ball i use a plate and use the same disappearing marker to trace it Now resist. I wet the silk again and dry it again. And you see, on the one hand, this is simple exercise, but it gives a basic idea of how light and shadow are distributed on objects. 
and of course in the future it will help you a lot in painting right now i'm showing it with only one color it's easier to start but if you master the volumes in monochrome then you only have to add color later i really hope that my tutorials help those who paint silk as a hobby and for the rest please read the copyright issues in the description under each video and going back to the sphere, as you can see, I first find large masses of shadow and light, and then start varying the value within them. Sometimes it's even better to exaggerate the volume than to underdo it, but then everything can be smoothed out with an elastic stiff brush. Such a sharp shadow can happen in a very bright light, for example, under direct sunlight. If you find this video useful and interesting, I'd love your reaction to it. In this are our 3D elements. And in the next video, we'll learn how to apply the knowledge of volume in practice.